All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast. We're talking about the men's and women's Liège, best on Liège. I'm joined, uh, I feel like I should say this first, by the newly engaged Allison Tetrick. Congrats. Holy moly. What took so long? I don't know. Probably because he knows what a liability I am. <laughs> well, we sh- we could have told him that. Yes. Mr. He George Hink- yeah. Sorry, also, Mr. George Hinkap, he's d- d- texting somebody, probably texting Bobby and Christian. Hola. <laughs> Morning, everybody. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all like on a group text with each other. It's cute that well, you get jealous, though, Lance. It's cute. <laughs> is it, isn't it, Ali? I thought the same. <laughs> Johan Bernil over there in, in Madrid, J.B. Hager with new backdrop at, uh, down in Austin, Texas. I'm coming to you live from outside of Nashville, Tennessee, trying to figure mm-hmm. out how to play golf again. Just, I don't even know what happened. You're in Tennessee. You're in my neck of the woods almost. I'm in your neck. Of, I'm close. I'm close. But uh, I didn't want, I, I wanted to surprise you. Uh, today, <laughs> today's show brought to you by Manscaped, the global leaders in men's below the waist grooming. Just ask George, Bobby, and Christian. They offer precision <laughs> engineered tools for your family jewels. They're now offering products for your not so private parts. Exclusive offer for our audience. Use the code the move to get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. <laughs> I just still, it's like, I'm here with some buddies, you know, we were, we've been manscaping each other. Like we play a little golf. <clears throat> and then we do <laughs> you should, you just don't, I think this shit is so funny. You don't think it's funny at all. Anyways, head on over to manscaped.com 20% <laughs> off free shipping code, the move. Uh, today, I'll show brought to you by Dry Farm Wines. Uh, I had a little too many uh, Dry Farm Wines last night. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought you were on. Uh, you were off the sauce. I was. I was. But you can't come on a golf trip with buddies and be off the sauce. Sure. Um, now you're back on. Okay. With the Dry Farm's doing a cool thing. Not only the, the whole process about how they source biodynamic and organic wines, but uh, in partnership with us, they're doing three special boxes. So for the big grand tours, the Italian box, the French box, the Spanish box. Uh, however, those are available today. You don't have to wait for those races. Head on over to dryfarmwines.com slash we do. Um, and George, you, you and Bobby and Christian are probably sitting around having some dry farm wines. <laughs> this is so good. And by the we'll way, they, a, huh? We'll get them to do a cameo on the show one of these days. Yeah. All right, we're talking about Liège, best on Liège, and uh, we're going to talk about the men's race first, but I mean, I think it's just, <clears throat> I'd like to find the cannon that somebody shot Remco Evenepoel out of. That, that attack, I mean, he could barely keep his back wheel on the ground. I don't know if you guys noticed that. When he went, he, he about lost the back wheel. That's when you know somebody's coming with some, with some uh, power. It was like yeah. a Caleb Ewan sprint is what it looked like. Yeah, yeah, you you saw you saw um, Nelson Palace just trying to go with him and could not even hold on to that wheel. I mean, this, this right. says a lot about the power of that attack when the best guys in the world can't even, you know, hold on to his wheel. And what's yeah, cool is is you know when I remember when we used to race Liège Bastogne Liège, La Redoute is is we talked about it during the Flesh Alone piece. I mean, it is a it's a very very steep hard climb, but it's been best I can remember. It's just been so long since we've seen somebody go from that far mm-hmm. out on La Redoute. I mean, like when we did the race back in the day, La Redoute, people would just shit their pants. Um, yeah. And now it's, it's all these guys are so good. It's almost just because, yes, it's still hard, but it hasn't played a factor in the race until today. Well, yo, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm watching it's, that solo attack. I want to ask you a question. Do you think Patrick Lefebvre is watching that going, God, I wish somebody went with him with 30K to go. He's got to go in between two or three guys. I think we're all thinking that's way too long to go solo. But what he did I mean, was just incredible. No, I was, you know, the fact that he went there, George, you know, I mean, I was, I just wrote down literally like five seconds before he attacked, I said, no attacks on La Redoute. Mm. And there he, there he went. And, you know, the, especially where he went, you know, it's, it's steep. Then it flattens out a little bit, but keeps yep. dragging, dragging. And, you know, it's not like he surprised anybody. He was in second or third position when he went. So they all saw it and nobody could go. You know, Nelson Polis tried uh, great attempt, but you know he was obviously too strong for him. And uh, and from then on, I think for a guy like Remco, really from what we have seen in the past, it's actually best he's on his own. That's how he. I mean, he's an amazing time trialist, and you know we all know that tactically he's not uh, very experienced. So 
he was just going and going. And, you know, I, I, in, in our internal group chat, I said, you know what? I mean, he's, he's gone. I mean, it's like, it was, it was unbelievable. Well, the combo, um, the combo of just how good he was going. And then as we always talk about just the, you just can't get consensus in the back. And, and mm -hmm. if you're up against a kid like that, who's in full TT mode, <laughs> as, yeah. you, as we said on the, I don't know, I don't forget, I forget who said it on the group text, but seeing the douches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got yeah. a, yeah, Let's, I'm ahead, not on this down. group text. So anyway, there's that. Um, <laughs> oh. second, of all, <laughs> second of all, I Googled him because I'm like, I feel like I needed like to know a little more about Remco. He has a nickname on Wikipedia and it says his nickname is the Arrow Bullet. Mm -hmm. Who knew? I, yeah, wow. I mean, yeah, he is, he is, he is, he is, he is very aerodynamic, but I think what we really should uh, also mention is the fact that, uh, you know, we all, we've all been talking about quick step about their poor spring, you know, this obviously, I mean, it's, it's one of the four monuments that have happened until now. They won it in what a style, especially, and even more so after the bad luck they had because they had two, you know, leaders, they had Philippe and they mm -hmm. had uh, Remco. Philippe, in my opinion, was the number one leader. And in my opinion, the plan was that Remco would give it a try on La Redoute and that Alaphilippe would wait until uh, the last climb. And you know what? I mean, even if Alaphilippe was gone, he just went for it and just, you know, followed the plan. And uh, I mean, the confidence that guy has, I mean, yes, he, you know, it's, he's a bit of a controversial uh, personality. You know, he's cocky. He says certain things that people don't like, but man, if you finish it off in such a style, you know, makes me think a little, I mean, I mean he's, he's obviously, I mean, he's more level-headed, but you know, it's since Frank van den Broek that I've seen something like this. You know, Frank van den Broek also said, I'm going to attack on Lara Dut. And he did it, you know, and he got caught and he, he attacked again and he won. We all know, you know, how sadly his st story ended. Remco is definitely not comparable. But in terms of uh, being confident and being cocky, um, I mean, he definitely has those two, mm. those two uh, characteristics. And, you know, you, you, love him, you love him or you hate him, but... The guy's a damn good bike rider. Speaking of that, what I'm curious, what, what is his, and I thought I caught some of this on the coverage, but I wasn't sure. How is his relationship with Wout Van Aert? It seems a little, if it, just watching, seems a little frosty. It, it's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's, you know, they congratulated each other. They kind of try to say nice things about each other, but the relationship is not, in my opinion, is not great after the world championships last year. Mm. Uh, you know, he, uh, Remco didn't follow the plan in the world championships. Uh, then on top of that, I actually spoke with a friend about it uh, a few days ago. Um, there was a debriefing meeting after the world championships uh, and Remco decided not to attend. But then instead mm. he went on Belgian TV and spoke his opinion and said that, you know, he wanted to be leader too and that he could have won. So, as far as I know, they said they were going to talk about it. They have were having a meeting about it, Remco and and Wout, but it hasn't happened yet. So, you know, I mean, well, but that's that's that you can't do that. I mean, you, you gotta, you know, if 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 the team's having a meeting, everybody's there. You, you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta be there. Yeah, I want to yeah. remind everybody something about Remco because it was August of 2020. If we have new listeners who haven't been following all this his horrific accident in, L yep. in uh, Lombardia, which was just under two years ago. Mm -hmm. And when did he officially come on form? Because today was unbelievable. Is it you saw you saw him at Pay Bass. I mean, he was doing an incredible job for Ella Philippe. I mean, some 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 of the days he was leading out with like 5K to go and nobody could even go around the guy. He's got incredible power. He even said he was feeling better and better. He didn't have the confidence that he's, he's used to having. But in the post-race interview, he said, that um, you know, this was his best day on the bike ever. And this is coming mm -hmm. from a kid who's yeah. had an amazing career so thus far, but Belgian kid, young kid winning Lies Best Old Lies in his first Lies Best Old Lies, by the way. This is an incredible yeah. result. Definitely worth noting. Um, the Belgians were uh first, second, third, and fourth. So a great day for the Belgians. Right, JB? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming the protester was Belgian. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Who, who let the, the uh, fucking who let the fucking guy in the road? So you know he's he literally a, in that would he's in the shot. It is what it is. But I mean well, he's they, in they, the shot with with Remco. You know the climate change thing. Like okay, I got and it. They, I and and at Flanders too, coming in behind the lead. So the the climate change guys had a good spring season. 
Mm-hmm. So they've two, two they, second places, two podiums, two, two podiums for climate change. Okay. It's funny. It's, it's they funny beat, to see they a guy beat like out, that. Uh, they beat out PETA and, um, <laughs> and, uh, the me too movement and the smoke bombers. <laughs> no, it's, it's funny, funny to see a guy like that, you know, just, you know, obviously he's waiting there, j- jumping the fence at the last moment, running, then turning around and basically standing waiting for him to be arrested. You know, I mean, <laughs> who does that? You know, it's, 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 it's unbelievable, you know, but he was, you know, that message got, got across uh, two times in two of the biggest races in Belgium. So that's right. Congrats yeah. for them. Can I give an extra special award though? Like the sweetheart award? Do we do that in pro to men's your, cycling? To your future husband? <laughs> no. Did you guys see Roman Bardet going down in the ditch yes, and actually that was bring, yeah, yeah. bringing all of Philippe's like stuck under his bike? And I, I don't know his status. I know he was in the ambulance last I read, and it's still probably too soon to see what happened. But Roman Bardet just like full sends, jump in the ditch to, to bring out all of Philippe. Wow. On was- different teams. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It was. I mean, it it was it was uh, it was it was obviously nice to see. At the same time, it was worrying because you know if a guy does that, it's because it looks bad. Right. Exactly. You know, otherwise, otherwise, I mean, Robert Bardet, you know, he just comes freshly off winning the Tour of the Alps, so he's in great shape. He's you know uh, preparing for the Giro, uh, but it it you know that crash uh, obviously changed the race um, with mainly Alaphilippe out. Uh, I think six out of seven riders from education first involved mm. uh which you know which was was it's a really bad luck um but yeah i mean ala philippe was laying there down and it, it looks to me like he fell on a rock or something um yeah he, he fell on a ditch but you know the worst part about that crash is they're going downhill at 65k mm. an hour and it's not yeah. like oh let me i can probably get out of this now you're some somebody's going down in front of you the whole like you saw half the peloton went down it's just really bad luck for all those guys do, do we yeah. have any kind of injury report going into the Giro? Uh, not yet. Too soon to tell from, from yeah, the accident. Soon. Well, Alaphilippe yeah. wasn't going to do the Giro, but I'm sure I mean, there was, that was just carnage. So somebody's, yeah. somebody's Giro got affected. Yeah, there's broken collarbone. I saw a guy with broken collarbone. And uh, I mean, there's still some broken bones there for sure. Mm-hmm. It is the fastest Liège best on Liège since 1963, which is noteworthy. But I'm asking myself, like, how (laughs) we all know the bikes that they rode in 1963. Mm. How has it taken us? I don't know. They had three or five, 60 years years to ride faster than than, you know, guys, uh, you know, riding Flintstone style. Well, we need to we need to consider also, you know, we would have to look up what the course was like. Right. Uh, Same as same as uh, Paris-Roubaix last week was also the fastest since Peter Post. Hmm. Uh, also in the 60s, but apparently there was only 20 kilometers of cobbles and compared to 55 now. So we would have to see what the course was like. But anyway, it's still- I tell you what, in your, in your spare time, Johan, why don't you go ahead and, and uh, look up what the course was like for Liège Best and Liège in 1963. Let us know how that search goes. Ooh, and and ooh, what ooh. a bike might have looked like <laughs> yeah. at that time. Okay. Would be we would also like photos of the bikes from 1963, okay, okay. please. Okay. Well, I mean, all, all I, the bike can, manufacturers are like, "Holy shit!" I can. I can. Tell, we haven't, I can made, tell we haven't you, made a lot of progress here, guys. I can Go tell you, man. It's, it's <laughs> it. The bikes back then were. I mean, I know what a bike looked like when I started racing in 1980. So imagine. Uh, and I had. I had. Was five it? Years. It was. It had the the big one in the front and the really hey, little hey, one. The, come on. And the wooden <laughs> wheels. No, we, no, because we could we couldn't get over the obstacles. <laughs> guys going back to to roubaix i mean what talk about wild van art what a fighter clearly not on a great day today gets dropped does not give up comes back and still makes the podium you know after getting second place in roubaix after having covid i mean this guy just continues to impress every time he yeah. puts his uh his kid on they asked him what it was like to get third he's like well it's it's not bad he's like it's not what i woke up to do though <laughs> like yeah, he didn't wake up today to get third that's, in Liege Baston Liege. That's yeah. just crazy. I mean, also a guy who only did Liege Baston Liege once, uh, well, Van Art in the past, or if it was his, oh, it could, could have been even been his first part. I don't, I'm not sure, but, mm. uh, and you know, I mean, one guy we really need to talk about is the guy who got second, Quinton yes. Hermans. <clears throat> and, you know, and, and, and his and, team, and, I, and I, exactly. the team, I mean, you know, b- b- between, uh, the season they've had, I, and I was, and I asked it after getting well, I'm like, what, what kind of, and you, you corrected me rightfully. So you on clearly they're having a hell of a season. Yeah. This is a team that's been transformed. You know, uh, they under, they're undergoing a metamorphosis plans. 
<laughs> hey, you're the one who says all this goofy shit. I mean, I, <clears throat> we, we, you know, we, we, thank God we don't do these shows in Flemish and you get to make fun of us. This this time I'm pronouncing it right. I did my yeah, research. I understand. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, Intermarché is a team obviously on the up, huge sponsor with a huge potential. You know, I think it's right now it's probably only Benelux Intermarché, but in France it's huge. Hmm. Um, so I think uh, you know this is not a coincidence anymore. This obviously also interesting fact about Quinton Hermans. He's one of the top five best in the world cyclocross guys. Interesting. Again, Again, a cyclocross guy, you know, and, and uh, his post-race interview was very, very uh, funny. You know, he said, well, you know, I came here, I knew I was in good shape, but, you know, I didn't imagine I could uh, be in the run for, uh, for second and then winning against Van Aert. He was, he was very, very surprised. But, I mean, to be up there, even if he came back and even if he took advantage a little bit of the tactics and it slowed down and they, they looked at each other, but, man... Yo, Johan, is he, uh, is he is he known to have a fast finish or is today sort of those yeah. no, you know, he's, he's, sprints of yeah. attrition whoever's got a couple of matches left because he came around with ben art uh, relatively easy it looked like well, yeah he, sa he said in, the, in his interview he just he he that's the only wheel he wanted he had the wheel mm -hmm. to start the sprint so he, he set himself up to do that for sure well, i'm curious yeah. uh, all this talk about cyclocross and all these new stars we've seen come from cross uh, is that something like uh, George, your, your son is starting to take racing very seriously. Is, is he looking at cross as part of his program? No, we do some mountain biking. Um, but no, we haven't done any cycle cross. Interesting. Is he dropping you yet? It's Not yet, but uh, he did his first cat soon. two, three races this weekend criteriums and he finished both of them in the top 20, which I was pretty uh, impressed. Wow. Well, at 15, 15 correct. Th 13, 13 years old. Yeah. 13, 13. 13. 13. Yeah. Oh, 13. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. I mean, his dad was winning the crits in Central Park when he was 13, but <laughs> weren't you? I remember no, reading well, these stories. Not, they, they, Park, they wrote about George and the old school Velo News. I, I talked about this before, but Central Park is <laughs> a six mile loop. You fucking, know you, you, have... you write you get the writing about this guy. I'm you know, nobody's writing about me yet. I was so mad. I was like, well, I, I can't wait to meet. I don't like this guy. <laughs> I didn't I didn't I had never met him. I was like, I don't like him. Fucking and guy ends up being my you, best bud for life. Fast forward, you show up to the Olympic, Olympic Training Center with a white IROC Z yeah. doing burnouts in front of the coaches' houses and getting banned from the OTC. <laughs> I drove the white, I would call her White Lightning. I drove that IROC from Plano up to Colorado Springs. I had a bike rack on top, which, and I was actually just out on a ride uh, before the show and I saw one. I'm here in Tennessee. There was one like in somebody's front yard. It's not, it wasn't white, it was black. And it clearly hadn't moved a bit because all the grass and shit was growing up underneath it. I was like, man, I ought to just put a note on the on the front door of that oh, house and try to get how it. How long are you there for in Nashville? I leave tonight. Oh, okay. Dude, okay. I sent you that auction of a white IROC Z about three months ago. <laughs> that was your chance. It was uh, it was white lightning for sure. You need to get that. <laughs> Gotta get, get it back. Freezing oh, around what? Aspen and an IROC. Uh, before I want to, I want to, I want to get, <laughs> sorry, Lance, spe quick special shout out to Philippe Gilbert retiring this year has won the race a couple of times in his, this is his hometown. So it's kind of a, you saw the emotion of him coming across the line, not his best day on the bike, but still clearly he's got a ton of respect in the Peloton, a huge following. I mean, he's a major superstar in Belgium. Great guy too. I was teammates with him on BMC. So, uh, you know, and Valverde's uh, birthday shout out tomorrow, tomorrow, number tomorrow. 42. Wow um george you're gonna take down that philippe gilbert poster in your bathroom when he retires <laughs> no i'll keep it up keep it up <laughs> before we jump into the women's race today's show also brought to you by athletic greens here i am i'm on the road no problem i bring my travel packs uh, this is something i am super religious about i'm not great about eating veggies and all that stuff you're supposed to eat uh, but all in one packet 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. You know what that means, right, George? Yep. Because I because I don't. But uh anyways, uh less than three bucks a day. Uh total game changer. Take control of your health. Let's make it easy for you. Athletic screens, athletic greens, I should say, is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash the move. 
Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash the move. And by the way, don't take it from me. I mean, all these smart people that I deal with and talk to, fortunate enough to talk to all the time, like Peter Atia and others like that, say this is this is all you need, right? Just so take it, don't take it from me, take it from them. Last one. Uh, today's show is also brought to you by Therabody. Now, this company, they're making a suite of products that is so insane. Not not just the uh, the percussion stuff, the vibrating foam roll, or all of the other things to help recovery, as we uh, also talk about, widely used in the Peloton. They've just released the Recovery Air Jet Boots. That's the world's most advanced pneumatic compression system ever created, clinically proven to improve recovery. Uh, sit back, relax, and recover. Go to therabody.com slash the move to get your Therabody recovery air today. That's uh, starting at just 699 bucks or 59 bucks a month with a firm. Again, that's therabody.com slash the move. Miss, wait. <clears throat> okay, for real, serious question. Allison. Yes. <laughs> Are you going to change your last name? Oh, don't get me started on that. I changed it once before, so we'll see. Oh, you, 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 I didn't I didn't want to bring up the fact you were married before. And it took me like, I don't know what, like eight years to change. Like I had, we won't say the name, but I had you in my contacts as the previous last name. And I, I just never, I don't know what I was thinking, but you get so mad at me. Yeah, and you do it still to make me mad when you call me by my previous well, now that, name. Now that you're going to be married again, I promise you, I will not do that again. That would be okay, such, thank you. such a dick move. I'm not going to do that. How, heaven forbid you actually do a dick move. Yeah. <laughs> so unlike you, it's shocking. I know, I know. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's dive into the women's race, huh? Also, wait, wait, are, are you going to change your last name or not? I, I don't know. Okay, you all know? right, sorry. I, don't I, I just kind of want to talk about this engagement. I think it's so cute. That picture on Instagram. I know it's really cute. I can't believe he heart. actually chose me. Like he has to choose me and like how much I crash and fall. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like just this tornado that he's like constantly trying to organize and put back in at least one section of the house. Yeah. And, you, <laughs> and you actually fell uh, right before, or right after the question. Um, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a funny story but i did i uh, just take a leap took a leap of faith off a fence in my cowboy boots and my little fringe dress and landed in a pile of cow manure and mm. the show must go on <laughs> and it start it's with the hell off to a hell of a start off to a hell of a start <laughs> he's used uh, to it too he was like please don't no. oh she's gonna do it again yep she's always crashing <laughs> just let's talk about cool. the women's liege best on liege one by i'm gonna I'm, Anamique Van Vluten. An Anamique. I was going to say mm -hmm. Anamique. Anamique Van Vluten, her 89th pro victory. She's so, okay. and, and Allison, you were saying this. I mean, she's sort of the Alejandro Valverde of the women's peloton. Uh, but 89 pro wins. Come on. Yeah, I've raced with Anamique for many years um, and 39 years old. And she is uh, keeps getting stronger. So this is the second time she's won LBL. Um, and she's known for just her crazy long attacks, climbing abilities. Um, she's, she's had two second places in the last two months. Like she just, she's been getting second in these classics like Strada Bianchi and, you know, she's just Flanders, you know, she just hasn't quite been there on, on Amika's a riding style. I mean, Johan, you've worked with riders like this. I, I was similar, not in her climbing level, but I have like zero acceleration or pop. So, um, yeah. Anamik I mean, likes I, to go to the line solo because hmm. most people can just come around her, but you have to stay on her wheel to be able to sprint her at the end. So she is just an incredible athlete. I think, I think I, we, we've touched on this in, 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 in other shows, maybe last year, but uh, you know, before she was on movie star, she was on, uh, on the Australian team, right? Mm -hmm. on, on, green edge. Yep. Gr or green, green edge. edge yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard that at the training camps uh, in the beginning of the season, they, you know, she, they did rides, the women and the men together. And uh, she was constantly top four, top five on all the hills. With um, the men's which, team, yeah. Yes, 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 exactly. Um, and what, what really, I mean, obviously it works for her. You know, she is the best. She's the strongest. As, lo as soon as it's two kilometer climbs and longer, she's by far the strongest. But this, you know, I wrote it down here, said this, this wobbling chewing gum up and down style she looks like a chewing gum going up and down i mean it's it's yeah, this is you're not very, being very nice <laughs> no but i mean i mean she she will agree she will agree i yep. mean it's not the 
it doesn't look efficient, but it's obviously, I mean, it must be for her. But I mean, she's all over the place on the bike and still, you know, she, you would always think she's dead. She's tired. She's, you know, she's finished and she just keeps going. And today again, you know, with, as soon she, she, she did this impressive attack on the last climb, she had tried already before. And then they kind of came back a little bit. And just after the top, it's a little downhill on La Roche de Faucon. And then it goes up again. And she was gone. As soon as it starts to be hard and you need to put out the watts, it, she's on another level. Uh, and, and what's really imp impressive, you know, we've said it in every single race she's doing, is that how alone she is against the peloton. And I guess especially against the ASM. Um, and they just can't follow her. It's, hmm. it's, it's crazy. It's well, she, had, she had no choice today. Like, like we said earlier, she's been so close in the last couple of races, you know, always finishing with one or two other riders. But today, clearly, she did not want that to happen. And she mm -hmm. attacked, I don't know how many times until she finally broke the rope and rode away from those guys. Amazing ride. Yeah, she's yeah. just coming off that second place finish as well at Flesh Wallone, too. And you can see yeah. it like mm -hmm. she goes when it's hardest and steepest. And she does have a very unique style, a lot of just she's going that hard, which always impresses me. I'm like, Oh, wow. Is that what it looks like to go that, that hard? Is that what I did wrong? Like, do I need to do that? I believe the but, correct um, term for that alley is chewing gum, chewing gum. Yeah. <laughs> so she waited, uh, she soloed the last 14 K to win, um, uh, by a healthy margin of 43 seconds to the chase group. Um, so it was similar to Remco finish, although she had to wait a little longer because like George was saying, she kept having attack and attack to make sure that elastic finally broke and then she had the the room to time trial in um and it was a well, very emotional finish for her she was she's just a lot of second places lately hmm. that's also that's also what impresses me so much like also mariana Vos, for example these these cyclists they've won everything and they win and it's unbelievable how happy they are it's <laughs> like you know okay you know it's it should be like okay business as usual you know just won the edge mm -hmm. uh, but you know it shows how difficult it is um, and you know how she has to ride, and uh, you know she went on. She, she did a bit the same as Remco. She went on La Redoute, had one rider with her, uh, Marlene Russer mm -hmm. from uh, DSM. Didn't take a pull. She just doesn't <coughs> care. Just rides, rides, rides. And then they caught, they catch her, and then she goes again. It's. Uh, I mean, we all know how hard it is to drop somebody, but to ride yeah. like that, have somebody on your wheel, and then dropping them. That's that's just incredible. That's a, yeah, that's, 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 that's a boss move. Don't forget, they both said they both went with 30k to go roughly, and they both had headwinds coming into the finish. So yeah. Not only are they dealing yeah. with all these climbs, and they're going through riders that typically with a headwind you should be able to sit on a lot easier. Well, you clearly you sit on a lot easier, but they're still just riding them off their wheels in a headwind and staying yeah. not only staying ahead of the the chasers, but putting time on the chasers. Yeah, yeah, and 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 all the all the riders behind her had two riders. You know, there was two Francaises de jeu. There was two DSM, uh, only one track, I guess. Um, but anyway, there was there was obviously you know riders to to cooperate, and uh, I mean you know I was thinking today if if we can place bets already now on the Tour de France, uh, if the stakes would be higher, because who's going to beat this woman in the Tour de France? She's um, in my opinion, she's unbeatable. As long as soon as the as soon as it's two or three kilometer hills, there's nobody who can follow her. Well, we're what gonna be. Uh, well, we're going to be following her, uh, yeah. right? Right, uh, at yeah, we're, um, we're definitely following her, and uh, yeah. So I think it's she's insane, and so yes, my money is probably on her for the yeah, Tour de France. I, 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 I have to, I have to confess that I won a little bit of money with her today. <laughs> oh, how much? Yeah. Well, sp speaking of teasing out uh, uh, additional shows, of course, we are going to cover the women's Tour de France, uh, just as we do the men's daily, uh, daily, every day, uh, full setup. We're bringing uh, our, our, our boss uh, full time to Aspen with us, but uh, also launching a, a <laughs> oh, wait, go on. <laughs> I didn't realize you made some money today, but but it's not surprising because you your picks when it comes to, uh, you know, what's going to happen in the race, who's going to win, et cetera, are, are exceptional, right? And we, we, you didn't, we, we did this unbeknownst to you, but we have monitored your picks over the last year, and they're, I think, right around 53% right. So we're starting a little sports betting show called Outcomes because there's so much action. Uh, and we talked about this last summer. People, some people are like, yeah, what are you, what are you, talking? you can't bet on sports. What are you talking? Everybody bets on sports, but um, tons of action in cycling. So we're going to start that show up. 
uh, during the Giro. The Giro. The Giro. Yep. Yeah. With yeah, our friends, with our with our friend Spencer Martin. Yeah. Very um, excited about this, and um, yeah, I mean. So how much was, did you make? What? How much you make today on? on you know, I mean, the thing it's it's listen. I mean, as unbelievable as it sounds, today was the first time in my life I bet it, I bet on a cycling race. Hmm. So. Uh, you know, I don't really know how these sites work. So I picked out a site and, you know, th there's a limit you can, you can bet, you know, if the, if the odds are really good, they limit, uh, you know, and so it's not much, it's not much. I, you know, I, don't I, say, I, don't say too much. You might get kicked out, you know, kicked out of Vegas. They do that to people at times. <laughs> Lance, yeah, but did, you, <laughs> did you mention the statistics or were we allowed to tease that or not? Uh, his percentage? 53%. 53%. That's, 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 uh, that's like more than in, any in, any other predictor in any sport. By the because way. because we're not talking about um, uh, not to go too far down this rabbit hole. We're not talking about a a head to head competition, a Super Bowl, a World Series, an NBA, fight, whatever. I mean, this is hundreds and hundreds of different athletes and factors to be batting fifty three percent. Wow. I think I think what's going to get really interesting during the Grand Tours is you get into that week three. And there's the breakaway opportunists. You're yeah. going to have great odds to bet on. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the payout could be huge. And Johan's so good at knowing who those guys are that need the win. Uh, things really shake up in that last. Allison, week. how tight are your? Listen, we are going down the rabbit hole. Okay, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> um, uh, how how close are your connections uh, in the women's pro peloton? I'm I'm assuming they're pretty tight. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so that's lots that, of WhatsApping think, going on. That's what right. So I right. think that's yeah. the, the you know that inside baseball stuff. Because uh, mm -hmm. JB, to your point, I mean this you, you you get to the third week or in the women's race, you get to the final couple of days. There's teams that haven't had results. There's riders that haven't had results, and there's also those riders and teams that are breakaway specialists. Like those are the gems you find. Like this guy, you know, like the Thomas DeHens of the world that that uh just manages to do at least one a year mm -hmm. um so mm, outcomes outcomes starting at starting at the zero starting every six. day starting yeah. six. maybe we can mark today as the beginning of the slide of johan Bernil's life addicted right. to gambling <laughs> yes <laughs> i've already googled uh, uh gamblers anonymous in madrid i've got it's it's right it's actually right around the corner from you johan no problem okay Okay, send me the address. <laughs> oh, God. Anything else right. uh, uh, um, stand out for the women's race? Yeah, I think uh, Johan and I were discussing earlier in the pre-show, um, SD Works probably, they've definitely had faith in, in some of the riders in there. They had the numbers. Um, maybe the wrong rider. Rooster is going. SD Works is chasing Rooster, who's off with, you know, Van Vluten. So they definitely wanted to reshuffle the deck on, on that. Um, so they have a, they have Damie Vollering there and Ashley Mullen Paso who are both stellar. So they, I could see the confidence in their riders. And I think it, they just had, it just didn't work out to, to mm -hmm. what they expected. Uh, Damie's won LBL before. Um, so, you know, and Mullen Paso is like very fast climber. So I think they kind of had the, I think the tactics was right. It just shows the trust in their riders and their team, but it just didn't shuffle the way they wanted it. Um, uh, Clara Hossinger is out there racing and she made the break. So we're talking about cyclocross stars racing road. That's she's our national champion in the U S and uh, wins world cup cyclocross races. So she's out there racing LBL and all these classics, which is super cool to see. Um, and then, yeah, I thought Leah Thomas, uh, she's on track. She had a, she had a great race, did really good team weight teamwork. And then, uh, we got her Lamborghini getting fifth place, which, which isn't so bad after like winning Paris Roubaix. Right. So Trek had That's some impressive. bad luck. They lost. Yeah. They lost a few riders, but, um, during the race, but you know, so I think, uh, it just shows, uh, Van Vluten was definitely the strongest rider. SD works played their cards. I, I think, right. It just didn't work out in their favor. Um, and then, yeah. Hmm. So I thought that that's what I we go. We got two solo wins and I think the both strongest riders from both the men's and the women's race, one, one LBL. There we go. That sums it up. JB, you who said can, you got who, some, uh, Ali, so we Ali, got some... Ali, sorry, Ali, one last question. Seriously, who can beat this woman in the Tour de France in this peloton? I, um, I think okay. no, no. I think only teams. I think you have to. You have these strong teams. Like I think SD Works has a chance if you can isolate with high numbers. Uh, Trek has another option. You still have Voss, and you never know what Voss shows up. Um, I think she's been struggling a bit lately. 
but you're going to really have to bring the best team possible and really try to isolate her. Cause I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think Van Vluten has the strongest team by any means. No, so no, no. it's, it's just no. a matter of, of really having those right tactics and, and a little luck on your side. Yeah. Okay. JB, you, you yeah. mentioned you got some uh, uh, questions from, yeah. from the listeners. Yeah. This, from, we, it's uh, been a minute since we took questions and we do it every day during the tour, but this is a nice little, nice little comeback. Little Work twist, to be more twist. diligent on yeah. that. Cause yeah, I'd like it. Uh, and there it's fun reading Instagram names. <laughs> Insta Marky Mark Graham wrote, wow. <laughs> Thoughts on Primos Roglic absence from the classics. Does this favor him going into the Tour de France? That's a, that's a Johan question. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, you know, there's, and, and, you know, even, even a guy like Pogacar today, same thing, but, but Primos, you know, Primos has a, a, a track record of, being at the top of his game for every race, always going for the win. He got this injury um, during Tour of the Basque Country. And uh, apparently it's taken care of, uh, you know, it's under control. But the fact that he's now not been doing uh, Amstel and, and Flesh and, uh, and Liege, in my opinion, is an advantage. Now, I, it all depends. I it agree. all depends how he wants to come back, how he, co- he wants to come back, because... You know, this guy, he never races for second, you know. So in his first race, when he shows up again, I uh, don't know if that's going to be Dauphiné or, or another race, but he's going to be on the top of his game. So, um, but I think it's, I think it's going to play in his advantage this time. Yeah. yeah not, not only that, Johan, but I feel like they probably think it was a bit of a mistake for him not to race uh, at all before the Tour de France last year. I mean, his form was clearly very good, but you lose that little sense of, you know, a reaction time. And you saw yeah. he, he got a couple crashes, which he's an amazing bike handler. That's, that's not his style. I think we're going to see him racing a bit more before the Tour de France this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Another question from uh, AU Cyclist. Do riders carry the same weight during can we, the class? Can we just, can we just break quick? Let's break down some of these names. Okay. First, <laughs> we had a question from Dirk Diggler, which is super fucking cool. Uh, AU cyclist is that that's either like an Australian cyclist or a gold cyclist, right? you know, George, <laughs> okay. did you ever study the periodic chart when you were, you skipped those days? It's been a while. Well, it's been a while. AU means you can just call Bobby or Christian. They'll tell you what it means. But, um, <laughs> a, so we have a gold cyclist. What's his question or their question? Uh, do riders carry the same weight during classic seasons that they do during the grand tour season? Great question. I would be uh, about 10 pounds heavier. In the yeah. We than in the tour of France. I think this is another uh, one of those things um, that really highlights the difference between our generation and this generation. I mean, you saw you, know, you saw Dylan Van Barla being interviewed after Flesh Will Home last week. I mean, come on, th- that guy can't lose any more weight, mm-hmm. right? So we, I was always five to ten pounds heavier, um, but th- I think this generation. And Allison, chime in on the women's side. I don't want to be, I don't want to even begin to start talking about women's bodies. I'll get in a lot of trouble. But you see, you see these guys, they're, they're just on the inside. They're just so lean. Yeah. I, I mean, Dylan turns, I mean, when, when I saw his interview after Flesh Wallon, I yeah, said, I mean, what the hell is this? I yeah. mean, you know, how, how, I mean, he, he cannot lose one gram. No. I mean, it was super no. skinny, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I think everything has changed JB. And, and I think they're, they're the same weight all year round, or at least whenever they're at top, top form, it's, it's the same weight. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'll concur with that. When you're at top form at this point, what I've noticed and heard, it's it's the same. All right, another question from uh, Drew Face. <laughs> Guys, in your prime, could you is hang- that his name or is it just like like when you can't remember somebody's name, you're like, what's his face? Drew Drew underscore face. In your prime, <laughs> could y'all hang with today's generation in these races? Also, we need some in person race parties at Hotel Domestique. Oh, let's do it. We did. Yes. We did one. Uh, we did one. Uh, we did a Roubaix there once. Mm-hmm. That was fun. We should uh, definitely try to do another one coming up here. So, could you uh, hang? Is the question. Um, I mean, clearly the the guys in 1963 could have hung. So, <laughs> I, I, I think. Uh, I, I it, listen. There's. A, you're asking, could we hang? Okay, hang. It means like stay in the peloton. The answer to that is absolutely um be better than or win or faster than no i i i could i don't think i could have lance the, 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 I, I think the answer is very simple you know the best 
are the best of their generation in their era with the circumstances of that era. You right. know, it's, 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 it, 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 there's the bad. So you guys would have been with the best, you know, the, the results would not have changed. Mm. Uh, absolutely not. It's, it's the athletic capacity and then the mental toughness and, and the talent uh, that doesn't change, you know, uh, you're, you're from a different generation. So yeah, I think it would be the, the best would still be, still have been the best. Uh, maybe, you know, the more, the more we advance in time, the more it's leveling out and the, the level is the general level is higher. Let's say 50 years ago, there was three or four guys, you know, then, then 20 years ago, there was 10 or 15 guys who dominated. Now there's 50, you know, uh, and those teams are better organized, but, uh, but yeah, the, I think the, 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 the ranking would still have been the same. Yeah. They're, they're, they talk a lot about it in the Peloton. Now the guys that have been around for a long time that back in our day, I guess the differences were we did, we were able to find some easy races, you know, coming back from injuries or coming back from illnesses where you can just ride in and sort of sit in, get some fitness. Now, apparently every race is full gas yeah. oh, start gosh. to finish. I mean, the guys aren't even <laughs> able, they talk Oof. about, they can't, nobody gets feed. Nobody gets feed bags anymore because they're mm -hmm. racing through the feed zones at you know, mock two speeds that they all have to bring their foods for the whole day and hope that they get stuff, you know, from their teammates, from the car. But a lot of them aren't even trying to get feedbacks these days. Wow. Wow. Uh, back in our, a, back in a, our day. That's a new scoop. Shit. Back in our day, we were stopping. Yeah. They had that, the table with the spread, but you know, put out <laughs> and we're like, well, should we in the rare occasions get that going you had again? To ride, in the rare occasions that you had to ride through the feed zone, you kind of would be considerate that, Hey, everybody, let's get it. Let's slow down for a second and get a feedback or, you know, just just be respectful to people get food you know you'd slow down now no more none of that i mm. did see attacks today when guys were eating gels and they were just going on the attack with a gel hanging out of their mouth you're right <laughs> uh one more question this will be great and 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 ali would love your thoughts on this too uh matt Stoller 50 writes most impressive spring campaign team and writer who do you think team or writer hmm Allie, you want to you want to go first on the women's? Ooh, that's really hard. It, uh, for me, I'm still going. Shoot, is it SD Works and like Kapeki leading the UCI Women's World Tour right now, winning Strata Bianchi uh, Flanders? So I'm gonna go SD Works, but it's a really close second with Trek Segafredo and watching Lisa Longo Borghini. But I think uh, SD Works has shown a little more consistency, better teamwork, and pulling off some really surprising results. Um, just a little short today, but yeah. I still got them. I think the one that stands out for me is Mahorich in Milan San Remo. Uh, I, I don't know. That just, it was unexpected. Uh, and also, I, I love the technological story with the dropper post. I mean, it did, when I sit back and reflect on five mine or the, the five races so far, that's the one that pops in my head. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to say most impressive team. Um, Intermarché for me, uh, from mm. where, where they like yeah. you know the the underdog and most impressive win. I mean, it's it it has to be the Eritrean guy in Gant Bivogem. It's you know, it's not a monument, but I mean, who would have thought this even five years ago that an Eritrean guy would win a Northern Classic? Yeah. Uh, you know. So, uh, so the, I mean, they're, they're, you know, is that near, is that near Colombia or Uruguay? It's down there somewhere, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I know. That's what, I, that's what I love about it. It's like, no, most of the world's like, wait, where is that again? I know where it is. I'm just playing, but yeah. When do we get another look at, uh, Binyam Gime at, at Giro? The Giro. Uh, yeah. he does, the, he does the Giro. Yeah. He does yeah. the Giro. So, uh, in my opinion, I don't know, but I think he's probably going to come back now for a tour of Romandy. He went on an altitude camp. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely going to see him stage hunting. You know, uh, I don't think he's a guy for GC, but uh, out comes to me, to me, to me, it was it was uh, an impressive win. And, and that team, you know, this is not a, this is not a coincidence anymore. They're mm. there and there's there's something has happened within that team that uh, uh, they have changed. G money. I'm going to go with uh, Ineos. I mean, being a, you know, yeah, a come grand back. tour yeah. team um, and being semi-quiet through the beginning of the year, we, we weren't even really talking to them much, about them much. And then coming out, hitting it hard with, uh, you know, 
Amstel Gold Race, uh, Fl Flanders, second place in Flanders, Amstel Gold Race win, Paris Roubaix. Um, some bad luck today, but they were doing a lot of work. So I think they're the standout team for the classics for me. All right, JB. that'll do it. That's the last JB. question. Sorry. No, but no, no, no. no that's... I was waiting. I was, I don't know if something stood out for you. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I was going to mention this, though. If you haven't listened to I've thought about it when you mentioned uh, 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 Guillerme. Go back and listen to the Up and Comers Picks show if you have not listened to it. I think it's going to make for some excitement in the remaining of the season. And Johan's picks again, back to the the gambling, the uh, you know that show they, they, they've they've wordsmithed that it's no longer called it's sports betting. Sports betting. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but those picks uh, of his new Up and Comer variety riders is already uh, yeah. performed and incredibly well. I checked Lucen the and, other day. That that show was one of our most listened to shows of the season so far for, for good only, reason. Not only uh, was Brian May one of your picks, Johan, but my standout rider for the spring, which I only mentioned team, but on the same team is Magnus Sheffield, who's one of your picks as well. I mean, what are what a season he's had so far, and I think we're going to see a lot more from him coming up. More to come. We're going to see a lot more of that guy, definitely. Yep. You know, talented, but the power that guy has is insane. Insane. Mm -hmm. Damn. And he had bad, you know, he was one of the guys for Rebay, had bad luck, uh, got stuck behind a crash, but he was there in yeah. that split. I mean, in fact, he he helped cause that split. Um, so yeah, we'll see. All right, well, I think we, we we can't we can't finish the show without uh wishing good luck to uh, uh Julian Lafilippe. Yes. Uh you know, um obviously a bummer for him to, to and and our condolences and, uh, to uh, Tade yeah. Pogacar, who's lost his uh, yeah. uh, mother-in-law. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was and, in this, and, yeah. and 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 flew back and couldn't couldn't race today or didn't race today. But yeah, good point, Yohan. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll be back for uh, what the Giro, right? The Giro, G Giro d'Italia. Yeah, yeah. There's a few other races in between, but uh, we're we're gonna be back for the Giro. So with. Uh, the different shows so outcomes every day jb squared two times a week la movida two times a week and then the move uh, a weekly update i guess right whenever george is whenever george is available he's got to check actually just Sounds call good. the guys and see when you're make sure you let us know when you can work around y'all's training rides <laughs> got it okay <laughs> It's and really let's get... sweet, George. You mean so much to him. I don't know if he's more jealous of, of, of Bobby and Christian or the 1963 LBL. Like it's getting it's getting tight. It's a close race. Are you are you coming off the market? I mean, this is a really <laughs> shitty day for me. I mean, this is not, George doesn't ever want to ride with me, hang with me. You're now getting married. I'm like, all right. Um, and then uh, and I suck so, at golf, so that's why I'm at golf camp. Says the guy who's in the southeast and doesn't even let me know until we're on the show. It's all good. <laughs> A couple hours away. Uh, all right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll Thank see you all you. soon. Thanks, guys.